Hello YouTube, my name is Nye, I work at Finale Guitar in Sheffield and you're watching my YouTube channel Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for all things Celtic backing guitar. In today's clip I'm going to be telling you a little bit about two types of Irish and Scottish tune in 4-4. Uh, those are hornpipes and reels. Reels are the faster of the two and hornpipes are slower so we're going to start out with looking at hornpipes. For those of you who don't know much about time signatures, 4-4 um, four, four just means that you've got four beats in every bar um, and those beats are crotchets. Americans like to call them quarter beats, um, people in the UK generally refer to them as crotchets. But basically what it means is that your rhythm underlying every melody in 4-4 four, four is going to be something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's just going to go on like that with four beats in every bar. For hornpipes and reels, which are the two types of 4-4 four, four tune that we're going to look at in this video, um, the melody is normally written in quavers, which are half as long again as those beats that I was just tapping. So if your beat underlying the tune is going 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, then the notes of a reel might be something like this. This is uh, an example with Cooley's reel in E minor. So you can see most of those notes are quavers, um, they're half a beat each. If you listen to the way I played that tune just then, um, all the quavers in it were the same lengths. So they were like... That is the sort of standard way of playing a tune, and we call it straight. However, a lot of players will play them swung. So instead of all the quavers being equally spaced, they'll take every second quaver and squidge it a bit closer to the one after it. So instead of bum 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 bum, your quavers come out sounding like bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum. So if I play Cooley's reel again, I'm going to play it about the same speed, but this time I'm going to play it swung. One, two, three, and... That's the swung version with the quavers squished, and the other version was the straight version with the quavers all equally spaced. The reason I mention that before we start looking at this pattern is that you will need to reflect that in your backing. Listen to whoever the main melody player you're with is. Um, decide whether they're playing the tune swung or straight before you start trying to play along with it. So. On the subject of hornpipes, we'll start out with them, because they're like a reel, but much slower. Hornpipes tend to be a lot more swung than reels do. So if I play King of the Fairies, for example, a very common Irish hornpipe in the key of E minor. swung. First things first, the principle is that your hand always goes down, up, 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 down, up. And the way that you make it sound good and rhythmic is by just sometimes missing the strings. So let's start out with that. Um, I'm going to um, just do down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. 
and I'm going to play it swung to match the feeling of the tune. So your hand movements are going to be down, up, 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 down. Now the next thing to practice is if you try it on an E minor chord that will fit with this tune. Um, your first downstroke is going to just hit the uh, bottom string, the bottom E string. So now we're going to do down, up, 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 down, you're going to miss out the second quaver, which would have been an upstroke. So now it's going to go root note down, up down, up down, up root note down, up down, up down, up root down, up down, up down, up root down, up down, up down, up root down, up down, up down, up like that. Next thing. You're going to also miss out the fourth one. So now you're going to have root, down, down, up, down, up, root, down, down, up, down, up. I like to play a game with my students where I draw a set of arrows, as you can see on my wall here, um, to represent all the downs and ups. And then I put fireworks on the ones that they've got to miss out. And if they hit those ones, then they explode. Um, so we'll try that. I'm going to put a little diagram on the wall so you can uh, imagine that those ones you're going to um, still move your arm but not hit the strings and if you do hit the strings, kaboom. So uh, careful. <laughs> so we're going to be hitting one, three, five, six, seven, eight, one, three, five, six, seven, eight, like that. Here we go. one very last step to make it sound really nice with a hornpipe and that is to make um, the fifth quaver also a root note like the first one. Um, another way of thinking about this, you should be always tapping your foot while you play, I've mentioned this in other videos as well because that keeps your whole body in rhythm. Um, it's going to be the first and the third foot tap on which you just play the root note. So you've got for a hornpipe. It's really quite easy. Um, the only thing that you need to bear in mind of it is, like I say, just to check how swung the melody players are playing the tune and reflect that. So if they were playing the tune very, very straight and it sounded something like this... <laughs> quavers all equally spaced so instead of sounding funky it would sound like this
version that I was playing before. So practice both versions of the hornpipe pattern until you get good at them. And then you can start having a look at a reel. A reel is basically the same pattern as those, um, except that it's much, much faster. Generally speaking, hornpipes are played more swung and reels are played more straight. So at reel speed, if I was playing along with um, Cooley's reel that I played before, then my pattern would sound something more like this. <laughs> That's exactly the same thing that I was doing before for the straight version of the hornpipe, except it's sped up a lot. And that is quite slow that I was just playing it for an Irish reel. They really do belt along. Um, so basically, get your head round the swung hornpipe, then get your head round the straight hornpipe, and then just keep practicing the straight hornpipe. I suggest you do it with a metronome. There's a link in the box down below to a good one, metronomeonline.com, which is free. Um, you can get free apps on your phone as well, there's lots of those, or of course just buy a metronome. Um, that way you can see how fast you're doing it, it will make you keep in time, because there is a tendency amongst beginners to speed up as they practice and then get frustrated with it. Um, so playing with a metronome is really good for just general timing practice and not getting annoyed with it. And also that way every time you practice you can crank it up one more notch and see how much you've improved, which is really nice. That's basically the gateway to reels then, is practicing that straight hornpipe pattern and just speeding it up a little bit every time until you can do it at reel speed. There is another more funky reel pattern, which is um, good for players who play reels a bit more swung. I'm going to be covering that in a later video because it's quite a bit more advanced than this. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. If you have, please leave me a comment. I'd love to know who you are, where you're playing, what sorts of things you'd like to see me make videos about in future. And also, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my channel. There's loads of other great Celtic guitar tutorials on there as well. Loads more coming soon. And hit the subscribe button to get all my free stuff straight to your inbox. You can also find a link at the end of this video to my ebook, Backing Guitar Techniques for Traditional Celtic Music, in which I outline everything I know about the structure, the music theory, and how to use more interesting chords, picking jazz chords, that kind of thing. It's full of chord diagrams, it's got audio examples, ear training exercises, loads of stuff. And it's also now available in paperback as well, which I'm really pleased with. So you'll find links to that at the end of this clip. Um, check out my other videos. Keep your comments coming and I look forward to seeing you for more clips very, very soon.